I want to get into ways to sell yourself with Excel because our uh, special guest, George J. Mount of Ohio, where all the great talent comes from, <laughs> and Chef Boyardee, um, has put together a really interesting, what I thought was a really interesting white paper on um, ways to sell yourself with Excel. So all of us on this panel have done exactly that, and I'm sure we all have our own um, methods tried and true and, and also ones that were not so successful perhaps. So I guess I'll throw out the first question. George, can you give us a short summary of how, to, how you sell yourself with Excel and then I'll invite our panel to chime in with how they got started selling themselves as Excel experts. Yeah, great. So my analogy kind of to start that white paper and if you go to georgejmach.com slash Excel TV you can find that, um, and then we'll post it in the notes uh, on Excel TV too. Um, I think of it as kind of like the tree in the forest kind of analogy. You know, if it falls and nobody hears it, did it really? You know, did it make a noise? So, you know, if you know a lot of Excel, but nobody really knows that you know all of it, like, do you really know Excel? Um, so that is where I really think that. Uh, learning a little bit of, of selling yourself, marketing yourself is really important for analysts. Most of the time we think that like, oh, marketing, you know, like I'm a data guy, I don't need to know that, but it really is important. You know, everybody needs to have kind of their own, you know, personal brand. Um, so so my white paper kind of goes through ways on, on doing that, uh, whether it's like going through LinkedIn, uh, what to put into your resume, um, you know, ways of kind of communicating the value that you can bring to Excel because I think it's one of the most important things that really any professional should know because it's so widely used that no matter where you go and no matter what industry it is, you know, it's going to use Excel in some way. So that's something that you can immediately, you know, maybe you don't understand the business or the industry that well the first couple months, but if you know Excel, you can come in right away and, and add something to to that organization. So that's why I kind of think it's a great tool for self-branding and self-marketing. And, and, and I guess it's kind of for everybody then, but yeah. for, 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 for all of you, um, and, and Jordan, you've had to market yourself. Mm -hmm. And Sylvia, certainly, uh, particularly as a trainer and a consultant being out there, you've had to market your skills. And maybe as, yeah. as bloggers, it's a little bit different for us because we've already had to make that jump, <laughs> you know, to kind of put ourselves out there. Um, have have any of you found it difficult to take that first step to kind of jump on stage for the first time and say, "Okay, well, I'm going to uh, I'm going to start to market myself." And did it feel weird for you, like it felt for me? Hell yeah! I'll tell you something. I in um, I guess more recent years, frankly, I've started moving away from the title Excel consultant. At at first, I, it seemed really exciting, and I thought, <laughs> but frankly, I'm. I guess I've found more and more that people don't always care so much about your weapon of choice, if you will. Mine happens to be Excel because I love it and I'm good at it, I'm great at it. But at the end of the day, do people really care about that as much as can you help us solve our problems? So uh, just to add to that, um, you know, I am. Um I've been going, I, I started out uh, marketing myself as like Excel expert or Excel consultant and I really thought, in addition to that, I thought, hey, if I put in the time and I get the Excel MVP, um, that will just pay dividends because I will be the best. But what I found out is nobody really knows what an MVP is. So while it was a great professional goal, it certainly didn't uh, help me get any more business because then I had to sell what an MVP was. So in addition to explaining what I do, I had to say, hey, this is not a certificate, it's an award. So in many ways, I've sort of moved away from that because it's been a lot of work uh, to explain what an MVP is. And really what people are looking for is kind of a jack-of-all-trades that is manifest. Not I shouldn't say jack-of-all-trades, but someone who's good at data wrangling or data visualization and is just manifest of these technologies. So uh, the Excel expert is actually really more of a data expert or a data visualization expert or a BI expert. Uh, and this, these, like Sylvia said, are their tools of choice. Um, so you really need to hit both things because some people do have requirements where they say we must use this technology. But you do the value is 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 really the return on investment for the business, and that's what I've struggled and hopefully have succeeded in the last few years uh, selling myself. 
here's, here's kind of what I ran into. And, and with selling yourself, uh, not only professionally kind of in, in the job, but um, a, a fear that we all have, and certainly I had as well in putting myself out there. And I had a business coach just before I got into the Excel TV thing and deciding to, to go down that path because, you know, who, who am I? Uh, to start up Excel TV, and then before that, even to start up uh, the blog and to start doing interviews with Jordan and Minda Tracy uh, before Excel TV even started. Who am I to do that? And I had a I had a business coach who was walking me through it, and, and my business coach happened to be a guitar player. And he said, "You know, I can sit around Rick all day long. He's a guitar player in Netherlands or something, right? Uh, Switzerland, I think. Um, so he's a guitar player out there, and he says um, he also happens to be a great business coach." And he said, there are people all over here who play, who can play guitar incredible, but, but, but most people will sit around and complain about the music scene, you know, complain about there's not enough jobs, there's not enough this, there's not enough that, the environment, right, complain about the environment. He said, and my life changed once I stopped complaining about that and instead said, okay, I'm going to take my guitar and I'm going to go out on the sidewalk and I'm just going to start playing. I'm going to start marketing myself, and I'm just going to start playing. And he said, "And Rick, that's what you need to do: get a hold of Jordan Goldmeyer interviewing, <laughs> get a hold of get a hold of these people and start interviewing them, and get a hold of these people and and start talking. And don't be scared to do it because Rick, here, here's here's something that's going to happen: um, your fear and everybody's fear where they're kind of marketing themselves for the first time. The fear is that you're uh, that everybody gives a shit. <laughs> Guess what? Nobody gives a shit. Yeah. No, nobody, nobody's yeah. nobody's really concerned about your personal struggle, and, and as much as you think you're on stage and maybe that you're you're beating your chest or anything else, nobody else really cares. And and they they will there will there will be a lot of people and friends and neighbors and people that you consider friends who will admire you for it, and there will be some even close friends who will kind of talk shit about you. <laughs> that's really because you're doing something that's out of the norm. Don't let that dissuade you. You know, be be the be part of the two percent who market yourself and to and to kind of make that next step. So and, anyway, I'm getting a little bit off my soapbox here. No, but I, I say all that just to say I think good. it's I think it's important like to it. market yourself. Go ahead, Jordan. Sure. Um, so what I was going to say is that um, you know a lot of people get really concerned because they're like, well, who am I to who am I to comment on this? Uh, and I understand that that concern because you think you're not good enough. Um, you're sort of afraid of what other people might say. But I want to just speak about a previous guest that we had on, who was John Michalaudis. Uh I think at some point in 2014, I had sent out something to all the people on my email list, asking them, well, "What do you want to learn?" Thinking about putting a class together, and John wrote back and said, "I really want to watch a class about pivot tables." And I never really made that class because that's not my subject. But guess who actually now has a class and is considered an expert on it? It's John. So he went out and he learned it, and then he decided to take that information, distill it, and sell it, and he's doing very well. And he took that leap, and some people say, oh, in three or four years, I'll be ready. It seemed like he did it in less than a year. So um, it's not really a question of, of learning talent. Um, it's not a question of getting to a point where, you, where your expertise is ready. It's really getting to a point where you yourself are ready. Um, what's, your, what's your take on that, George? Yeah, I think that, that one thing that really helps is instead of, of looking at Excel as kind of like a domain of knowledge, thinking about kind of the end user and trying to uh, funnel a lot of information, including Excel, in, into what would value that person. And, and make sure that you kind of communicate that you do care, you know, about, about helping them. Um, so like my blog, for example, you know, I go back and forth all the time, like, is it an Excel blog, is it not, is it more, you know, economics, analytics, like, what is all this stuff? But, you know, I kind of have the, the target in mind of, you know, somebody that's coming out of school, you know, they have an interview at the bank next week, how much Excel do you know? Oh, what, I don't know, what's that? Like, what do you use Excel? Like, how do you use that? Um, so really trying to think about who can I really help so instead of just thinking oh you know like nobody knows Excel and that's part of why I, I really enjoy it is it's kind of like a you know cloud of information some people know some things other people know other things and you know we kind of have this communication thing going on with the blogs like exchanging things so everybody has a pl place to, to, to play in that um, 
in my example, you know, I'm really trying to target it or toward people about, you know, how can I get started in data? How can I get started as an analyst? So that's kind of how I've approached, you know, tackling the the knowledge problem, the end user problem, and things like that. So, so if you think there are in, in your white paper, are there are there a, a few target areas that you think are the most important that people that people focus on as they're starting to market themselves with Excel? Well, I definitely think so. Going, so I'm trying to put all this stuff into a course. Uh, that's like been my big push. Um, my two top recommendations to learn are VLOOKUPs and pivot tables. Um, I kind of I use like you know the old saw about the handyman that could fix everything with WD-40 and duct tape. Like I kind I say that VLOOKUPs are like the duct tape of Excel, pivot tables are the WD-40 of Excel. Learn those two things, you know that'll handle 80% of your data starting out if you want to be an analyst. Um, so really understanding why you want to do that, you know thinking about data integrity, um, data wrangling. All those issues um, can really get you on your way, and it really starts making you think about, you know, how to structure data well, how to use it, you know, how to frame problems. Um, so that's how I would suggest uh, somebody starting out what they look at first, um, and then you know, walking into, you know, how to present all this stuff at an interview because again like just saying you know all these functions like that's not really going to impress a lot of managers you want to talk about you know this report will be accurate it will be done quickly it will be flexible so if we need to add things take things away I can do that um, so kind of you know not just going on about oh what I know but saying you know what does this do for you again focusing on kind of like what does the end user really value Focusing on the benefits, not the features. Definitely, yeah. Gotcha. So um, I, I know Jordan and, and Sylvia, you have to do this on a pretty regular basis too in your training as, as you're outselling yourself as a consultant, etc. I mean, is this kind of a, a, a weekly, monthly struggle? Maybe that's the wrong word. I don't know. Uh, but it's something you have to tackle quite often. Um, what what sort of how do you go about marketing yourself outside of like you know the web and this that the other how do you go about marketing yourself whenever you're marketing your skills? Um, I would say I you know I call myself a data scientist because it's in vogue and I have the statistics uh, skills and um, the the like data science programming skills to call myself one but I don't I don't necessarily care as much about that. I guess the way I market myself is uh, you have a data problem, you, your business has a problem right now, the problem is that you don't know how to realize value from your data or you are obsessed with data or you are not interested enough in the data. When I say obsessed, there are organizations that are just so focused on being data driven that they metric themselves to death um, and the data they collect is junk but they're just so, hey, this is the data, it's the truth, we can't get around it. Uh, that's not really how to operate. So, I try to say that I help you become confident with your data. So that's how I, I guess I, I market myself. I don't really try to market myself in a technology angle at all because I think technology projects have a lot of issues where they run over budget and run out over schedule. And I want people to view me as more of a management consultant. So yes, I call myself data scientist. It's in vogue, but really all I try to get a sit down with a client or a conversation because then I can say, hey, peel back these layers. You have your real problem is a business case. It's not a data case. It's not a technology case. I could not agree more. Um, well, this is a great point that you bring up, Jordan, because um, I think George, somewhere in your white paper or somewhere, I saw you make a comment about don't call yourself a data scientist now. But well, I, I said I must R one. Be legit. Right. That's why I added all that stuff. Back when I was in school, you know, like in the 1800s, we had these things called encyclopedias. Now it's it's called Wikipedia, and I so I would just like to share with you the definition of data science. According to Wikipedia, data science is an interdisciplinary field about processes and systems to extract knowledge or insights from data in various forms, either structured or unstructured. Ding, 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 we're all data scientists. So I, I agree that it's, you know, it's a good thing to call yourself one because it's in vogue, but I think we really are. 
Uh, and I think the field is expanding because it isn't just about Excel anymore. It is about solving problems, and it is about it is about big data. I'm running into challenges with big data myself as a current client. Everybody uses Excel. Everybody's in VLOOKUP help. Nobody knows what the hell's going on because there's just too much data. Everybody's spreadsheets take 25 minutes to open because they have. It's great that they can do a VLOOKUP, but you can't do VLOOKUP on 300,000 rows of data. Yeah. So I'm just saying that it's it's a different world, and I think it's important to keep that in mind as analysts, as data scientists, if you are brave enough to call yourself one, because it it is what we do. Right. I've been having a new theory on the definition of data science, and yeah. I think it comes from science. So, you know, what do scientists do? They use a scientific method, right? Mm -hmm. They test hypotheses, they observe things, uh, you know, revise their conclusions. Um, and I think for, and we're talking mostly business here. Um, so, really, you know, where you think that a data scientist comes from, you know, knowing how to wrangle these unstructured data sets and everything, I mean, I'm really starting to think it, a lot of it is, you know, do you have a hypothesis, you know, do you have enough knowledge in that subject of expertise that you can kind of make informed uh, predictions and kind of test them um, in that data. So, yeah, in that sense, I mean, I guess it is more broad uh, than, you know, I might have led in this paper, but I do think that, you know, so many people call themselves a data scientist because, you know, they can make a pivot chart or something. It, you know, it, it is a lot deeper than just knowing Excel. You have to know a lot of uh, subject matter be behind that. Again, it's just the weapon, right? Like, it's not really the, the meat of it, so. Right. Getting into hypothesis testing, et cetera. So you're gonna, yes. You're going to make me geek out, so I'm going I'm to not dive too deep on that. But what I was hoping <laughs> you could do, since the since the uh, entire conversation was uh, to some extent around your white paper and talking about that, do you have a, a copy of that if, that you can kind of show us and talk I about do. to find that again? Uh, so if you go to georgedaymount.com slash XLTV, uh, you'll get a little landing page. Uh, it'll have some notes. And uh, you can click through, get your own special copy of this. Um, I also have a, a login page to, to sign up for the email, so I definitely uh, encourage you to sign up for the list because really we're really hard on uh, a course right now, and it's going to cover a lot of this stuff. So if you like this, stay tuned. But you can, yeah, George J. Mount, thank you. <laughs> That's uh, georgejmountain.com forward slash Excel TV. Go ahead and check out the white paper there. How do you go about marketing yourself with Excel? So uh, a lot of great thoughts on that, so go check out the white paper there. And, hey, go ahead and put your email in there. Why not? I mean, he's going to have a course coming out here pretty pretty soon. You know, I've been looking, been looking under the covers on that a little bit, and, you know, there's a lot of exciting stuff that George is putting together around the training of how do you go about marketing yourself in, in Excel. So please go take a look at that. Go ahead and sign up for his email list as well.